Okay, I wanted to uh, thank Ruben and uh, Mary Lou for giving me the opportunity to share some of uh, the results that, that uh, we've uh, conducted on the uh, uh, Fusaria associated with the Ambrosia beetles. Uh, I want to start from the very beginning by emphasizing that the work that I'm going to talk about is totally in collaboration with uh, various people listed here. Uh, I started the collaboration with uh, Stan Friedman and Zev in uh, Israel. Uh, uh, after that, uh, with Dave Geiser and a former PhD student, Matt uh, Kesson, who did the work on Alianthus that I'll briefly mention today, uh, Alex Rooney and Alec Kusay, and uh, who are colleagues in uh, Peoria. Uh, Takeyuki Aoki has been looking at the avocado pathogen, trying to see if he can distinguish it uh, phenotypically. And, Last but not least, Randy and his colleagues in Florida for sending isolates uh, to try to figure out what they have in the way of Fusaria associated uh, uh, with uh, avocado and other uh, uh, economically important plants in Florida. How do we advance this? Oh, okay. Okay. Um, uh, yesterday, I heard the F word mentioned over and over again, uh, uh, Fusarium, but in this particular review of uh, uh, the Ambrosia uh, fungi, the filamentous ones, uh, you'll note that Fusarium e even didn't make it onto the radar, so I added it. Uh, uh, it's in a completely different order of your typical Ambrosia uh, fungi in the Ophiostomatales and the Microascales. And Fusarium is, as the name suggests, uh, characterized by these banana-shaped uh, uh, canidia. Oops, the wrong way. Um, I can get the, but anyway, the banana-shaped canidia. Uh, but the, uh, many of the ones that are associated with these beetles uh, don't produce these uh, hallmark uh, uh, fusiform canidia. And in fact, uh, the uh, Fusarium ambrosium uh, uh, systematics, if you want to log on or do a Google search in, in, on Mycobank, you can get the systematics on the CBS website at, in Utrecht, the Netherlands. And needless to say, it's tortured, but not quite as tortured as the OAC fornicatus. Uh, so Fusarium is trying to get us to, to stop calling its names. Uh, originally, it was described from uh, tea uh, in uh, Sri Lanka, but not as the Fusarium. It was uh, originally described as Monoacrosporum ambrosium. Forty years later, it was re-described in Fusarium, but in a different species. And then three years later, Helgard Nirenberg pieced it all together and uh, recombined Monoacrosporum. Mono, uh, Acrosporum into Fusarium. And so that's the uh, uh, Fusarium ambrosium from, from Sri Lanka. And this is what the uh, original description looks like. Uh, there's no type specimen. At the time this was described, you weren't required to uh, deposit a holotype. Uh, so th uh, there's no material available. And I don't have any collections from Sri Lanka yet uh, that could be this very distinctive fusarium. Uh, but you'll note that in the sketch by David Brayford, uh, the canidia are, are very similar. And both of these were isolated from tea here in Sri Lanka. And Brayford's collections were all from southern India, also on tea. So it's reasonable to assume that these are conspecific, but we really don't know. And we can't tell from the sketches, because if you look at the sketches made by uh, Takeyuki of the avocado pathogen, they look alike too. And I'll draw your attention to some of the, the isolates that David Brayford included in his, in his description of uh, Fusarium bugencortii, and they're on uh, different hosts on uh, 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 chocolate and uh, rubber tree, and uh, those appear to be distinct uh, uh, lineages as well. So there are a number of different uh, a genetic entity species or clones that uh, 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 are on the, uh, a variety of economically important hosts. Well, in the description of uh, 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 monoacrosporum by Gad in uh, Laos, 
uh, they described uh, uh, this palisade of these club-shaped canidia that Jerry showed in his presentation. Uh, they also made a, uh, uh, what might be a very interesting observation, is that when they mimicked uh, uh, grazing uh, on the, uh, their agricultures, they found that it stimulated the production of mass amounts of canidia. And so that might be a, a, some kind of co-evolutionary -evolu modification representing an, an adaption to, uh, for the uh, symbiosis. And uh, this is somewhat analogous to the uh, 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 swollen hyphal tips called gondolidia uh, produced by the uh, mushroom cultivars or that are cultiv cultivated by the leafcutter ants. So uh, uh, we're going to be looking at all the symbiotes of uh, these beetles to see if we can uh, simulate that uh, finding as well. So taking a uh, step back, uh, where does uh, Fusarium actually fit in in uh, uh, the global uh, phylogeny of Fusarium? And uh, 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 during this year, uh, Dave Geyser, who's here, and Alex Rooney and I uh, constructed a two locus phylogeny of Fusarium, trying to identify uh, the phylogenetic structure and relationships. And this was inferred from two genes that we found to be extraordinarily useful for resolving at our uh, near the uh, uh, species level in Fusarium. And these are RPB1, the, the, the small subunit of RNA polymerase, and RPB2, the second largest subunit. And you'll note uh, uh, that uh, the tree is nearly fully resolved. Uh, and uh, uh, you can see that the Ambrosia Fusaria are all nested in what I refer to as the Fusarium solani species complex. And I have to emphasize the word complex because uh, uh, solani uh, as a morpho species comprises 60 or more different species. So here we've constructed a three locus phylogeny using portions of three different genes, EF1 or translation elongation factor, RPB2 and the ITS and the nuclear large subunit. We also have RPB1 phylogeny for this as well, and it's concordant with the, the tree I show. But the main point here is you can see that uh, uh, the uh, Ambrosia fusaria uh, branch basically in what I refer to as clade three. So Solani actually comprises three phylogenetically divergent clades. Uh, most of the species in this complex don't have names. And so to be able to communicate uh, species uh, identity, uh, uh, Dave Geyser and I developed this informal alphanumeric uh, system where we refer to species by numbers and haplotypes within those species by letters. And so uh, you can see that M Ambrosium, or at least what we think is Ambrosium, is uh, species 19. And, uh, uh, where this uh, nomenclature is, is proven to be uh, most useful, at least in the short term, is within the clinical micro uh, community because this group of Fusarium uh, comprises at least two thirds of all infections of humans and other animals. So these are really bad things to get. And I want to emphasize that none of the Ambrosia uh, Fusaria have ever been implicated in any kind of mycotic infection and probably uh, are, uh, aren't able to do that. They're relatively rare in the, in, in the environment. But these are, the, the ones that are associated with infections of humans are extraordinarily common everywhere. So uh, 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 if uh, you try to apply a morphological species concept within Fusarium, you'll grossly underestimate the species diversity. Uh, uh, it's not possible uh, in any real meaning to apply a bio biological species in Fusarium, or at least where it has been applied, it's had relatively small impact on uh, the systematics. And so uh, we rely primarily on uh, phylogenetics, where we uh, generate independent gene genealogies and try to <coughs> identify genealogically exclusive uh, groups. And that takes advantage of the population genetic theory where you have 
uh, in, at the top of species and imagine that it becomes subdivided such that gene flow between the, the subdivided populations are no longer, no longer possible. Over an extended period of evolutionary time, the, the shared polymorphisms are lost uh, differentially in, in the different lineages and become fixed for uh, SNPs that are unique to each of these lineages. And that allows us, uh, by sequencing multiple genes, to identify uh, the uh, 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 genealogical species or phylogenetically distinct species. So for the Solanais uh, that I'll be talking about today, uh, we use the uh, two uh, subunits of RNA polymerase, EF1-alpha, and then the internal transcribed spacer region of ribosomal DNA and the five prime end of the nuclear large subunit. So this is about 5 kb of sequence. The top three genes uh, do a very good job of resolving at or near the species level. Uh, the ITS and, and nuclear large subunit within the Solana complex actually do a pretty good job, but in most other groups of Fusarium, uh, uh, it lacks resolution. And I wanted to emphasize two aspects of the RNA polymerase genes. They uh, contain considerable amount of phylogenetic signal all the way across the gene. Uh, 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 they're easy to amplify, the primers work on everything. And uh, uh, one really enormous advantage to use the RNA polymerase genes is they can be aligned easily all the way across the genus. So you can fit in anything that you find. So the uh, fusarium that Jiri mentioned earlier, uh, you could easily fit it in and uh, uh, identify unknowns quite easily. So in a combined analysis uh, of uh, relatively, and I emphasize relatively, relatively small number of isolates uh, associated with beetles or isolates that we think probably are associated with beetles, you know, we've identified uh, what appear to be at least six lineages, clones, or species. And these include, the top three are associated with Uloaceae. Uh, uh, the, the top ones associate with Aelianthus in Pennsylvania. And Dave Geyser will talk more about this later today. Uh, the second one is what I think is the real Ambrosium. But again, I emphasize these isolates all came from India, so we don't know what whether that same uh, lineage this is represented in Sri Lanka, but it probably is. Here's the bad boy, the avocado pathogen. And then uh, the, the fourth lineage that's associated with beetles is uh, uh, represented by an isolate from Zaliborus. And many of you will remember work done by Norris at, at the University of Wisconsin in the late 60s and 70s, and that's one of the ones that he studied that uh, was being formed by the Xyloborus. The, the two other lineages, uh, one from rubber tree in Borneo and the other one from Theobroma in Ecuador and from an unknown dead tree in Sri Lanka, we think are probably uh, uh, formed by beetles, but the people who collected them uh, were like me and they were focused on the fungus and they just didn't pay any attention at all to whether or not I ever gave it any consideration that it was actually associated with the beetle. Uh, I've pasted in an insert uh, uh, to emphasize that the uh, isolate from the, the, the dead tree in Sri Lanka was actually recovered from the sexual stage produced by these fungi. It's difficult to tell from the image, but when these go through a sexual cycle, they produce a little pear-shaped fruit in body, maybe a millimeter in size, that's uh, usually bright red. So we know at least this is a sexual species, and I don't think we can rule out that the rest of these are uh, uh, not uh, able to go through sexual cycles, maybe not on these particular hosts. So that was... Uh, the story as of last Thursday, but uh, Friday we were able to fit in uh, uh, data that we generated on a, a small number of isolates that Randy uh, sent to us from beetles that were trapped in galleries in uh, Florida and added two more uh, lineages 
Uh, and uh, uh, what this uh, has done is it looks like it shifted the age of uh, the agriculture by you know, I see from this node down to here. So it's somewhat older than uh, what we would have uh, predicted from the earlier data. Uh, it also emphasizes that, and I think Jerry did a real good job in his presentation of, of emphasizing that, that there must be like a ridiculous number of these lineages out there if from a, a, a tiny sampling, uh, not in any systematic way, you can find all this diversity. So uh, 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 this is literally the tip of the iceberg. So. Uh, Jerry also emphasized that uh, 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 most, if not all, of these are probably be, being uh, uh, clonally uh, propagated or they're predominantly, if not exclusively, asexual. Uh, and that's emphasized by the lack of variation, for example, like within the avocado pathogen. But uh, one of these species, the one that we think is ambrosium, stands out as being an, an exception uh, because it has uh, two uh, quite divergent groups. Uh, and so we looked at the individual gene genealogies and surprisingly discovered that uh, uh, these four isolates were identical. That is, they shared the same alleles at three of the four loci. And where it differed was in EF1, so the uh, uh, ambrosium or putative ambrosium contains uh, uh, divergent alleles with the, one of the divergent alleles uh, uh, being much more closely related but not identical to uh, uh, the uh, uh, fusarium from Aelianthus. So our uh, initial interpretation here is that uh, alleles, these EF1 alleles, may have inter intergressed into the ambrosium. And so if these uh, uh, fusarii have possibility for secondary contact, uh, uh, certainly as a pathogen, particularly an asexual path pathogen, it's going to be extraordinarily beneficial to them because they can avoid uh, a mutational meltdown and uh, avoid uh, Muller's ratchet by uh, generating new uh, 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 novelties. So uh, uh, this is a potential problem. And it also leads into the possibility if the fungi can hybridize, then uh, uh, how can you keep a fornicator from, well, doing what beetles do? So, so and we can try counseling and whatever, but I don't, but I don't, I don't, I don't, think, uh, I don't think that's going to work. So we were also interested in uh, uh, trying to relate the age of uh, this uh, mutualism between Yoasia and Fusarium with what was reported in uh, this uh, uh, classic study by Farrell uh, uh, where they uh, estimated the age of the uh, uh, mutualism in beetles as being as old as 60 million years. So I took advantage of my uh, colleague Alex Rooney. Uh, he's a uh, uh, molecular evolutionary biologist and uh, he ran uh, 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 beast analysis. Here he is in his time machine with his daughter. I think it's a merry-go-round, but anyway, it's his time machine. And uh, Alex's estimates were that the, this uh, mutualism with Uwasia is somewhere between five and 15 million years. But if Randy and others uh, uh, here find uh, uh, additional isolates uh, that, that could, could see, couldn't could easily conceivably push it back further in time. But at least at this juncture, it looks like we've identified a clade in Fusarium where uh, forming by Ulyricea evolved once, and that's all that we know, at least at this juncture. So I wanted to point out that uh, uh, for those of you who are trying to identify Fusaria, uh, if you don't know already, already uh, there are two websites, one set up by Dave Geiser, the other one, by my colleagues at the CBS Culture Collection in the Netherlands, where you can not only go in and, and do blast searches, download sequences, uh, uh, make trees, but unlike GenBank, uh, uh, in two important respects, uh, the sequences are 
curate it a lot better so you just can't dump anything in and call everything Solana, just for example. And more importantly, you can get the isolates and extend the results of the studies. Uh, here, I, I just wanted to uh, uh, post a number of questions. So for, for practically every theoretical question, there's a, 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 a practical application for uh, the, the knowledge that that would import. I won't try to read all these because I can see my time is nearly up, but uh, uh, you, you, you can see that clearly we need to know a lot more about the uh, species limits, the repro reproductive uh, uh, mode and population structure. Uh, with the sequences we have, uh, uh, I am reasonably sure we can develop uh, assays for uh, uh, most of the, the Fusarium symbionts, and either this can be done by real-time PCR. Uh, if we get more and more symbionts, we'll probably use uh, a flow cytometer to uh, 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 type them once we have a good idea of the genetic diversity. Uh, 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 hopefully, uh, well, I don't think it's a matter of if, but when, uh, the genomes of Fusarium and probably the beetle as well will be uh, sequenced. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see how the mutualism, uh, the five to 15 million year mutualism has shaped the genome, not only of the Fusarium, but also of the beetles. So I'll leave it there and try to answer any questions you might have. Transfer that they just when they grow together they exchange genes or do you think it's actually a sexual process that takes place? Um, I think it could be either. Uh, um, I didn't go into maiden. I don't. Uh, Dave, are you going to talk about maiden? Any? No. Yeah, it'll come up. But uh, um, I, I, they're they're not sexually dimorphic, but fungi have a main type. Uh, uh, loci that control uh, the ability, it's one aspect of the ability to go through a sexual cross. And so uh, um, whether these are highly divergent clones or species, uh, but uh, I certainly wouldn't rule out the possibility that they could go through a sexual cross. It also could be uh, parasexual, and I won't go into that, but it, it, that's mitotic and fungi can do, do that as well. So, uh, and, and in fact, uh, 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 probably the best study at mutualism in fungi is uh, in probably many of you certainly from the plant pass side know of Chris Charles' work on neotyphodium and epicoi. The neotyphodiums are asexual and they hybridize like crazy with their sexual relatives. But it's all one direction and th at this point. One, we don't know whether the ambrosia are hybrids, but it sure as hell look like it. And uh, our markers were not designed to pick up hybrids. So if we see them with so few markers, when people develop uh, markers from uh, knowledge of the genome structure, uh, then we'll be in a lot better position to uh, understand you know, how common, whether it happens at all, how common and where and on what host and so on. Okay. Um, and then um, one other thing, the, the Florida, um Fusaria that you, you show the stars on the brain. So were they, they formed their separate um, yeah. um, plate? Yeah, uh, uh, I, I would have included them in the tree, uh, but I didn't get the data until Friday in my computer that I used the Adobe Illustrator to prepare these on crashed on Monday. So, okay. Okay. so fortunately I did the PowerPoint presentation early in the week, but yeah, they're at every locus, they're like real different. I mean, so there's if, no they, if they would get together, let's say the Florida and the Israeli stuff, uh, and California stuff, then, um, you know, so what, is anything known about the rate of these lateral gene transfers? I mean, is this in a rapid process? If you, let's say, if you culture them both together on, an, uh, uh, on a plate, do you find evidence for a gene transfer between the two, or is it the two uh, no, no one has done that. We, uh, um, I think if you had uh, a MAT1 and a MAT2, and you were able to successfully cross them, then you could look 
at the progeny to get some idea on what kind, how, whether, you know, how, how normal of a sexual process it was, but the genetics hasn't been done, and I'm not trying to scare anyone by saying that, that, that these hybridize, but, but it looks like it. Yeah. And I don't know whether any, Dave, do you, do you want to, anybody else want to weigh in on No, that? at no. all. Okay. I guarantee it. Oh, okay.